Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at a mini challenge, which is going to put into practice the for loops that we used in the previous video. And this mini challenge is going to be about creating a simple phone book. And the phone book is going to print out the values of all your friends' names in an array. And it's going to sort them into alphabetical order. Again, I'd like it if you could try that yourself and see how far you get before you follow along with me and just try and get that to work, if possible, without my help. But don't worry if it's something you struggle with, you can follow along with me at the end and I'll show you a way of doing that. So let's create the folder for this project. And this is number 10. I'm gonna call it the phone book challenge. And then open this up in brackets. And then set the title of phone book challenge. Okay, and start with a blank script tag. So in this challenge, I'm going to get started with creating an array. And the array is going to hold the values of your friends. And because we want to use JavaScript to sort these out into alphabetical order, when you place the values inside the array, try not to put them in alphabetical order because we want JavaScript to do this for us. So we'll start with an array. So I'm gonna start with Chris and just put the values of as many people inside there as you want. So I'm gonna start with five values just to get it started with. So just like that. And then I'm going to use a for loop, which we looked at in the last video to loop through all the values and then print them to the screen. So let's start with the for loop and then just simply print the values of the array to the browser. So I is going to be initially set to zero, which is the first value of the array. And then we want the loop to keep going while I is less than the names array dot length. And then on each pass of the loop, we want to increment I by one. So let's give this a go and see if it works. So let's do a document write to the browser. And then let's take a look at names and then I. And let's see what we've got now. Okay, so there we've got Chris, Paul, Mike, Andrew, and Dave. So there's all the five values of our array, which is fine, but it doesn't look very good. And we also want to sort these to be in alphabetical order. So let's begin by sorting them alphabetically. So we've currently got all our names stored in the variable of names. So we need to set these to be alphabetical. So we do that with names and then we use the sort method. So we should now get these in alphabetical order when we refresh. There we go, so that works okay. So we've got Andrew, Chris, Dave, Mike and Paul. So that's all in alphabetical order. And just to give this project a little bit of styling, I'm going to add some pre-tags. So I'm going to add this just before, and then also I'm going to add it just after. So don't forget the plus symbols in between. And we'll set the forward slash. Okay, so let's see how this looks now. Okay, so that's now a little bit more readable. So we've got all our names printed in alphabetical order and with a little bit of a background to each value. So if you got this far, well done. I just want to add one more thing just to finish this off. I just want to add a number next to each person's name. So one, two, three, four, five. So we know how many names we've got inside the phone book. So just after the pre-tag, we can get that number with the value of I, because I is going to be incremented with every loop. And then also a colon, just to separate the name with the number. So refresh. Okay, so now we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And just because the first value is 0, I'm going to add i plus 1. So this begins at 1 rather than 0. And refresh. Okay, that's better now. We start with the value of 1. And then we can see how many different names we've got in our array or our phone book. So I hope you managed to do that. 
or at least give it a go and see how far you got. And that's the end of the mini challenge and the end of the section. And I'll see you in the next section, which is called JavaScript and the DOM.